There's a storm of brewing. At least that's what all the people on the internet say. You've heard of AI. This is not a normal video about AI. I'm not an AI expert. I have no AI thing to pitch you. But I want to talk about it. If you have a local home service business, I want to go over eight surprising ways that AI can actually help you. Like practical things, not weird connect 17 apps together things. These are pragmatic things that can happen because, you know, over the last six to nine months, I've really dug deep kind of investigating this. You know, is this hype? Is it buzz? It's not. In my opinion, it's not going away. It's going to change the whole world. It's actually terrifying in a lot of ways. If you couple artificial intelligence with like robotics and all the other weird stuff that the globalists want to do to humanity, I don't think it's a great thing. But in the meantime, since we can't stop it anyway, how can we protect ourselves, but also leverage some tools to save you some time for your family? Because there's some like warm, fuzzy, simple, good things you can do with it. I'm going to go through the list. Hey, welcome to the War Plan Briefing. That's the name of this video. I make videos videos like this for local small business owners who love God, family, country, and capitalism. And if that's you, you're in the right place. I want you to make more money. I want you to spend more time with your family and, and the world's crazy. That's it. <laughs> okay. So the first thing you can use it for that's kind of low hanging fruit is customer service related things. And you're probably like overworked, underpaid, running around like a maniac. Uh, but think about this and maybe, maybe you don't do this till the winter until you slow down, but you can get an AI chat bot to put on your website. If you hire a company to have a human monitor your chat or you hire an admin to sit there and in real time, like, like reply to people on your website. If you have a small business, you don't have tons of chats happening, but you could have a couple chats every day, right? That would be normal. And if you can instantaneously reply to people while they're on your website, it's a money making no brainer type of thing, but it's expensive, right? Are you going to pay someone three or $4,000 a month to sit there and wait and hope someone chats? No, you can outsource it to a company, but they're not going to do as good. You don't have as much control over it. And it's still going to cost you a thousand bucks a month or 500 or more a month. Uh, an AI chatbot, you can train it. You can like train it and you can upload all this information about you and your frequently asked questions and the, the history and story of your company. And then you can practice with it and ask it, you know, questions. And as it answers, you say, no, don't say it like that. Say it like this. And after like a, a day of doing this, it's like really good. And I've been experimenting with chatbots for some of my websites that I want to roll out. Uh, it's shockingly good. And it's a practical thing you can do uh, that can capture one more deal every two weeks or three more deals a month or something and that compounds over time so investigate that the second thing is you use ai for personalized marketing now the topic of marketing is big i am a nerd about you know behavioral psychology and direct response marketing and copywriting and all this stuff uh, but a lot of local businesses their marketing is really bad like really like most of them it's really bad and it's because they're kind of casting a wide net they pretend like they're coca-cola i see these local service companies put yard signs out in their community. And this is such a simple example. They put yard signs out like, hey, call now for window cleaning. But they put their logo this big on the yard sign. That's bad marketing. You're not Coca-Cola. You don't have to brand yourself yet. You need to just say window cleaning, phone number, and it will get you a bigger result. But when it comes to AI, what you can do is you can use it to speak to specific avatars of people. You know, if you think about your customer list, whoever it is, there's different um, segments to your customer list. You have the crazy weirdo people, we want them to go away. And then we have kind of a good middle chunk. And then we have like the best customers ever. And if you actually stopped for a couple hours and really thought through who your best customers are, you know, it's Mary and it's Sally and it's Rebecca and it's Janet and it's Larry, right? These five people are superstars because they never complain about the price. They always tip your staff. They're super flexible and understanding. They're giving you referrals all the time. They're in love with your company. These are super customers. What we want to do is figure out what common threads uh, run through all of them. Is it a personality type thing? Are they all, are all of them retirees? And maybe for some reason that segment resonates with the way that you do what you do really good. Well, once we know like who these people are, what their fears are, what their desires are, what their past failures were, what they're suspicious about, what, what freaks them out, what makes them happy. AI can very quickly write freaking sniper rifle laser targeted marketing messages specific to that type of person. And so the next time you're passing out flyers and you're deciding what headline should go on my flyer, we're going to, we're going to get 50 ideas from AI based on these five people, Rebecca, Kathy, Larry, and whoever else I said, right? <laughs> and it actually will make a big difference, right? Headlines by itself. This is another part of my notes here, but 
Just the headline on a piece of marketing can 27X the results of the marketing. Just the subject line of an email or the first big text on the front of a postcard or at the top of a flyer, just the headline, even on your website or your landing page, just the headline alone can 10 or 20X how many people actually convert to your company. Did you know that? And AI is way faster at figuring it out than most small businesses are, right? Because what are you going to do? Are you going to go get like 17 years of marketing education so you can write a good headline? No. No, use AI. Okay. Third thing you can use it for is email copy. Now I do see some lo local businesses starting to use AI and they're doing it bad because they just, you know, chat GPT, for example, it has a vibe. And so you can read, I, I saw a Facebook post from a guy and it was like this long, like super logical chunked out thing. And at the end of his Facebook post, it's like in conclusion, such and such and such and such. And it's obviously chat GPT. So we don't want to do that with emails, but we do want it to do 85% of the heavy lifting, right? And you can use AI to give you ideas for seasonal campaigns, right? Special offers you can do. It can write, you could say, talk to Sarah, who's a 42 year old single mom who's obsessed with fitness and health and she's a vegan and she's a homeowner that makes 200 grand a year talk to her in an email about buying my hvac service and it will do it right now now if you're really lazy you'll just send that email and that's better than sending nothing which a lot of people don't send enough emails to their clients um, but you can edit it tweak it polish it up and boom 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 bing bang boom ai just helped you make more money the next thing is add hooks hooks is like a headline hook is you know when you're marketing you're fishing and sometimes when a small business markets and nothing happens, they get like emotionally devastated, you know, and, and it, this still happens to me all the time. I'll test an offer or I'll test a hook or I'll do something and no one cares. Guess what? It's not because you're a bad person. It's because they just don't care. Right. So testing hooks and emotional language is a big deal. So if you have a Facebook uh page for your business and you post just general whatever 10% off coupons and before and after pictures that's fine but let's sprinkle in some hooks where you ask your audience a question right or you target a specific pain point and if you're doing this manually you're going to get in your own head and you're not going to execute on it and it's going to be this big nightmare but did you know you can use AI to generate 50 hooks talking to Mary about all these potential pain points and all these desires she has and all the fears she has and it will just give you this unlimited uh, well of things to test and as you're throwing out these hooks, it's going to be very obvious which type of messaging hits and which doesn't hit. And no, it doesn't mean you're bad if it doesn't hit. I remember I asked Russell Brunson himself one time to look at a website I made, like, tell me what you think. Is this going to work? And he said, no. And I was like offended. I'm like, Russell, like, why won't you just look at it? And he said, because I'm always wrong, Josh, who knows? You got to like, let people decide. And that's the same thing with hooks. You know, one headline, one little hook, one little angle, the way you position it to throw rocks at the competition or use local weather forecasts to get people's attention or whatever, AI can help you do that. Another thing you can use it for is blogs and SEO. Who wants to sit down and write an actual blog? Are you serious? And then if you hire this SEO company, they're just going to take all your money and they're going to say, oh, just wait three to six months, Mr. Jones, three to six months three to six just keep paying no it just takes time and now you're two years into it you paid a thousand a month oh three to six months nothing's happening and they're just having some crew in pakistan write your blogs for you and they're sterile and they don't even do anything for you ai can do it in like two seconds it can even come up with the topics that the blog should even be about you can even tell ai to write the blog post in a snarky tone that's sarcastic because it matches your personality you can tell it don't be so corporate don't be so sterile write this blog give me you know 10 blog post ideas for such and such and then you take the idea and you say write this blog post in a snarky tone to sarah who has these fears and this thing is your head exploding yet this is all possibilities. It's going to help your red website rank higher. It gives more content for the window shoppers to peruse through. You know, your competition has a, a boring website. You're going to have all this information on it. You don't even have to write it. You just have to tweak it. It's, it's insane. Another thing you can use AI for is artwork. And I've been playing with this. This is a little more challenging, uh, but I've kind of cracked the code on it actually in terms of using chat GPT to help me engineer prompt the thing that I use for this other AI called mid journey. Don't worry if you're getting stressed out. The point is, is that you can use AI to generate really cool images. 
And an image itself can act as a hook. An image itself is a pattern interrupt. If you're an HVAC company and you just put another air conditioning unit up there and run your ad, that's fine. That will work. Do that. But what if we tested weird images that AI made of an air, an, an, an air conditioner with a dinosaur standing over it, right? <laughs> or an air conditioner with like a nuclear bomb going off in the background. There's things that we can use AI for to get so much more attention. And rather than hiring a graphic artist and paying them a million dollars for like 20 bucks, you can use mid journey to do dozens and dozens of these pictures. And when you get good at it, it's crazy. I actually have my editors put some pictures uh, of AI that I use. I, I told AI, like, give me an image of a really stressed out business owner <laughs> and, and like set it in a certain way. And th this is what it made. You'll see right here. Are you seeing this? It's insane. Like it's hyper realistic. It looks like a freaking photo. And it's so the dynamic range on the image, it like catches you, like stops the scroll. It's fascinating. You can also use AI for social media social media posts. What should you post on Monday? What should you post on Tuesday? What should you post on Wednesday? Do you even know? Are you even doing it? Are you paying another 500 bucks a month for some college kid that doesn't care about your business to do it and it's getting one like and nobody cares? You can auto schedule your stuff. You can have AI help you get 30 days worth of social posts done in an hour and that includes you scheduling it all and you're done, right? And you save the 500 bucks and then it's insane. So social media is a no-brainer, but we still want it to have your personality. And, you know, I think a lot of people are lazy in general and I'm seeing it happen with AI too. You know, it's like they just copy and paste instead of spending an extra four minutes tweaking it, changing a sentence, deleting a redundant part, right? Or they, they, they don't spend six minutes working with the AI to say, nah, rewrite it like this. No, I don't like this part, do it like that. If you just do that little bit, people will not be able to tell that it's AI generated. It will be funny, it'll connect with your avatar, and you can have a consistent social machine popping for your business. And last but not least, this one gets me really excited. Personal AI voicemails. Okay, you're like, what does that mean? Well, in, I have a software company called Send Gym. One of the things Send Gym does is it can automate and delivering ringless voicemails to like your past customers. So if you have a spring special, yeah, you can send them an email, you can send them a postcard, Send Gym does all that, but you can also drop a voicemail directly into the voicemail box without their phone ringing. Okay, so they can't answer it. It's just a voicemail from you. And these things are insanely effective for uh, local business owners, like insane, it's a money printing machine. But the problem with it is that you have to record a generic message. Like, Hey, sorry, I missed you. This is Josh over at ABC service company. Uh, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. I'll send you an email as well. Just checking in to get you booked for your next appointment and so forth and so forth. What, what personalized AI voicemail is going to do, and it's already out there. And there's a couple companies I have my eye on right now that are building some insane stuff that have come out this fall is it will learn your voice by listening to like an hour of recordings from you talking. And then what it will do is it will be able to send a voicemail bomb, a ringless voicemail to all thousand of your customers, but every single one of them says, hey Mary, hey Sarah, hey Janet, hey Larry, Hey, Larry, you're still over on Main Street, right? Yeah, I just wanted to check. I had a note to give you a call. You're due for service. Let's get you booked. Do you understand what that's going to do for a freaking local business that has an actual in-person relationship with their people? Do you understand? This is money. It's money. Um, and then the most exciting thing in this entire video is this. Uh, for the last six months, I've been building software that does all of these things. I'm not ready to talk about it yet. I'm not certainly not ready to show it yet. But if that's interesting to you, just say, hey, that's interesting. Ooh, you got my curiosity peaked. Because the big problem I see is that all these tools are like all in different spots. And so for local, especially home service businesses, but lo any local business, what I'm doing is I'm making it automated plug and play. Like what if you got an email once a week and had all of your social media posts already written and it knows who it's talking to and knows what the urgency is and knows what the offer is, everything. What if you didn't even have to think about it? That's what I'm working on right now because this AI thing isn't going away. And no, I don't want to eat bugs and I don't want to uh, own nothing and be happy like Klaus Schwab says, that weirdo from the World Economic Forum. Uh, but there's things we can do to help our families, to help our businesses using AI, even if you have a small company. And uh, I'm going to be talking more about this in the future. What do you think about this? Is this interesting? Is it fascinating? Does it freak you out? Do you think it's a distraction? I'm curious your honest thoughts. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.